Giovanni, I'm Christopher from ChinaMobileMac.com and I want to provide you with a review of the newest Xiaomi flagship phone, the Xiaomi Mi 4. So let's not waste any more time and let's get right into it. So first of all we have a little look at the packaging and its contents of this phone and well, I said it already in my review of the Xiaomi Mi Pad that I don't really like uh, the packaging of Xiaomi devices which always is the same and very hard to distinguish from each other. I would like it if they would at least print the shape of the device or something onto the front. So here we have the Mi logo and a little spec sticker on the rear as usual. What's inside? We have one micro USB cable black, one wall charger, which is the same that comes with the Xiaomi Mi Pad. Then of course we have uh, this little envelope, which is typical for Xiaomi phones, and inside of that there are the documents, a warranty card, a user manual, both in Chinese, and of course uh, the tool for opening uh, the SIM slot of uh, the phone and the shop which sent us the device lamteen.de also placed a little coupon code inside which you get with every order so that's about it not much as usual with xiaomi phones so let's move further and with moving further i obviously mean uh, let's move to the design of the phone and uh, this is it the xiaomi mi 4 in white and well, I'll be honest with you, when I saw this flagship for the first time, I thought, hell, this thing looks ugly. But to be honest with you, that just was the first impression and I think a lot of people shared that with me. But now as I have this phone in my hands, I have to say that it's looking quite neat. I really like the design, it feels really good, it has a really good build quality. Um, well, from the front it almost looks like a Vivo phone, so if they would replace the Mi logos with a Vivo logo, I would buy the little light. And what do we have here? Some sensors, the phone call speaker, the front camera, and of course the soft touch buttons, back illuminated of course, and a little status LED on top of the home button. Around the sides we have a little metal frame, a lot of people call the Mi 4 a iPhone knockoff because of that, but let's be honest, just because the frame is a little similar, well, I don't agree with that. This has nothing in common with an iPhone. So what do we have here on the frame? On the left side we have of course the SIM card tray. It takes one micro SIM card, no micro SD cards, and obviously it's a single SIM phone. On the lower side we see a micro USB port and uh, the media speaker of the phone. I somehow dislike that it still has just one single speaker and not two of them. Here they could easily move the micro USB port to the center and place the other speaker where the micro USB port is now. So, well, as I said, I don't like that. And what I also don't like is the square shape of the micro USB port, which is making it kind of hard to figure out in which direction you have to put uh, the plug in. Um, I like the trapeze um, shape most phones use more. So let's move to the right side and here we see the two hardware buttons of the phone, these being an on-off switch and of course the volume rocker. Both have really nice pressure points and are made from metal and I actually like that they are placed above each other because that prevents you from pressing them by accident. Then on the top side we find an IR diode. Um, this one has replaced the NFC support. I for myself don't really get why they did it. They said they removed NFC support um, because no one was using it, but that's basically the same with uh, the IR port as well. So, well, doesn't really make sense to me. And of course we have a 3.5mm headphone jack here as well. So let's have a look at the rear side and here we see that it's made from polycarbonate with a glossy finish 
and a little carbon fiber like optic here you can't feel that it's really smooth um, does look really nice I have to admit and you also can swap these covers with different texture style covers like the style swap covers we know from the OnePlus One. So and else we see here um, environmental microphone for the camera, the camera itself and of course an LED flash and the Mi logo. Um, by the way to remove uh, the rear of the phone you need, you need a suction cup which does not come with uh, the phone, that's a little bit sad. I would have liked if they would place a little gap here or something where you can easily pull the back cover off. But well, all in all, as I said, high build quality and it looks really, really nice. Only the thickness of the phone is a little high. It has 8.9 millimeters. Um, this is actually not that much if you compare to what phones had a year ago. But the design somehow does it make look thicker than it actually is. And well, with a little grab into the magic box of design, they could have made the phone look more thin than it actually is. So well, that's basically the only thing um, that I dislike a bit about the design of the Xiaomi Mi 4. Okay guys, let me tell you one thing. I'm so grateful for Xiaomi to build in a 5 inch 1080p panel into their phone again. We know it from the Oppo Find 7 that the 2K panel is simply eating up processing power and battery life. And you actually don't notice that much of a difference below a 6 inch screen when it comes to the difference of 1080p and 2K resolution. So that being said, um, I really like that and 1080p for a 5 inch panel really is enough to make you not see any pixels. And let me tell you, Xiaomi has done everything in the right way here. This is actually, trust me, I wouldn't have believed that I would ever say that again, but this is probably the most beautiful panel I've ever seen in a 5 inch phone so far. Um, this thing is just amazing. Let's first have a look at the pixel density. As you can see here, um, you can't see any pixels. Not even through the camera and with the naked eye, no chance of that. And the colors are just amazing. Very vivid, still naturally. The contrast is very good. The sharpness is amazing. And also the brightness is really, really good. Very high. And you actually <laughs> can't see pretty much everything when being outside with this phone at full screen brightness. And what I also like are the black levels of the screen. Sometimes you could actually believe that you have an OLED, OLED um, panel in front of you even though this is not the case. And um, black really does look black. Um, and this is really amazing. So let's have a look at the viewing angles and as you can expect at such a high quality panel, this also is nothing of a problem. As you can see here, you can see everything from these sides, even at extreme viewing angles. Um, uh, the brightness is going down a little bit on uh, the left and the right side, of course, um, but that's typical for an IPS panel. But as you can see, there is not a single change in colors. They do not invert or anything. So that's a really, really good panel. And what I also do like is uh, the digitizer, um, which is actually very um, precise and has almost no input lag. So I really, really like that about this thing. Um, the only thing which I dislike a bit is that the fingers do not slide on the material that easily as they did on the Xiaomi Mi Pad. It's breaking the finger a little bit, so, um, well, it's up to you if you dislike that or if you like it. I don't like it that much. Um, and it also appears to be really tough. Um, I dropped it on a stone table by accident once, right with the screen um, on the bottom. And it doesn't have a single scratch, not on the screen. 
and also not on the metal frame. So that's actually pretty good and the phone appears to be quite tough. So next let's talk about performance of the Xiaomi Mi 4 and I have to say that I have a little mixed feelings about this phone when it comes to performance. Um, the Xiaomi Mi 3 had a Snapdragon 800 processor clocked at 2.2 GHz if I'm not wrong and this phone now has a Snapdragon 801 processor clocked at 2.5 GHz so it's a little bit faster but still has the same GPU and everything. Um, and it's still in quad-core uh, processors, so um, the difference you notice is not that huge. Not during real life and not in benchmarks. They are just like 3000 points, for example, in Antutu indifference, which really isn't um, uh, that much. And, well, in real life you won't um, notice uh, the plus of performance during your use of the operating system browsing the web or something. There's just no difference. Both phones are working fluently and, well, it can't be um, any faster than fast. Um, you only notice a slight difference in very demanding games and, well, even then the difference is not that huge. So, but now take into account the price difference. Um, it's over 100 50 bucks, almost 200 bucks in price difference when you compare the Xiaomi Mi 3 to the Xiaomi Mi 4. And this huge price difference just for the little faster processor and the 3 gigabyte of RAM that you get here, I don't know, you have to decide if this is worth it for you, but I for myself have to say that I would still choose the Xiaomi Mi 3 and not only because of the performance but also because of other stuff but more about it on a later. Okay guys, enough talking about my real life experiences so let's come to plain facts meaning benchmark results. First starting with Antutu and well um, when I wrote the review on ChinaMobileMac.com I was using Antutu uh, a previous version of N22 and now it got upgraded to version 5.0 and well as you can see this version scores much higher and also still has some verification bugs so well the score is a little different in the previous N22 version it reached um, 37k points and now we have 44k points so well it's a lot higher um, let's um, move forward to 3D Mark, and here we have reached, of course, maxed out in most of uh, the uh, benchmarks, meaning the 1080p and the 720p benchmark. Only the unlimited test um, hasn't maxed out and reached 20,319 points. Then I've also tested the phone with a GFX bench. I won't go into any details with this one, as this one is pulling out a lot of scores. So I will give you just a sneak peek onto the table, show you how this one scores. We just have a little update to do. So here you go, you can have a little look. And that's it, that's the usual performance of a Snapdragon 801 phone with a 3GB of RAM. And the last benchmark I run on this device is Willemo and his phone scored 1,701 points in the metal test, 1,735 points in the multi-core test and 2,133 points in the browser test, which is pretty good in my opinion. So that's about benchmark results and now I will give you a sneak peek onto the operating system performance and, and gaming performance in the performance demo. Have fun with that.
So now it's time to have a little talk about multimedia performance. And of course you would expect that uh, to run perfectly smooth on a Snapdragon 801 phone and it certainly does. 1080p videos aren't an issue but 4K videos are a bit... Um, my take is that the software isn't fully optimized yet and that's the issue is why it is, show, uh, is showing a little micro lags. Um, so it has a tiny um, frame rate drop every once in a while, um, which you do notice, um, but it's not that bad. Um, but the overall video performance is pretty good. Um, that being said, uh, let's switch over to um, the audio demo, or before let's talk about the audio performance of uh, this phone. And I have to say that uh, the internal speaker does not sound bad at all. It's just a single speaker, you definitely notice that, so it won't reach the audio performance of um, Oppo Find 7 or the Vivo X-Play 3S for example, but it does come close, it's still not as good as the Vivo X-Shot which also just has one single speaker, but it does come pretty close, it sounds very clear, there are no distortions or anything, it's pretty loud and it also has some decent basses, so you definitely can listen to music with that, but it's for sure not as much fun as with some other high-end phones nowadays. Um, the refund, however, as usual, starts as soon as you plug some good headphones or any hi-fi system into your phone, because uh, the audio output here is very good, very loud, very strong, very clear, and perfectly balanced, you really will have a lot of fun listening to music with that. Okay, enough about talking now, so let's get right into the audio demo of the Intel speaker. And now comes uh, the serious talk about reception quality. And I have to say that basically uh, the Xiaomi Mi 4 is doing an amazing job here. Um, I had pretty much all time full GSM reception here, which is very good. And this phone even managed to get a 3G signal on places where other phones don't get a 3G signal. So the antenna in there is really good and can handle the metal frame perfectly well, um, which often appears to be a problem not only with Chinese phones but with brand phones as well. But you would expect to get a really good um, audio quality during phone calls with such a good signal quality, but that's surprisingly not the case. Um, in my opinion, it has a pretty decent audio quality, basically. But um, either the software part responsible for the microphone management or the microphones itself aren't anything good just because they are not loud enough. You have to shout into your phone like hell to get a decent volume out of this one so your um, so the other guy on the other end of the line will understand you probably. And I think that's something not acceptable and I really wonder how Xiaomi could release a phone with such a flaw and I hope that this will be fixed very soon. Just for information, I've talked to other Xiaomi before owners already and they confirmed this issue, so I'm not alone. This phone is not defective, this is probably present with every Xiaomi 4 unit at the moment. 
So, um, I will keep you guys posted on that. Um, if they manage to resolve this issue, I hope it's not a hardware issue because this would be really bad. Okay, enough about the negative part now. Um, let's move further to something more exciting and this of course is Wi-Fi reception quality and I have to say that this one is working amazingly well. Um, to make it short, I didn't have any issues in the whole building here. There are certain rooms in which the Wi-Fi signal is really bad. Um, most phones uh, just either get very slow or lose the co signal completely. Um, the Xiaomi 4 didn't, I could still surf the internet over there. That's really good in my opinion. And the Bluetooth performance is also really really good, working almost in the whole house, which is outstanding for Bluetooth and I already noticed that in the Xiaomi Mi Pad so the recent Xiaomi devices seem to have a very good Bluetooth performance throughout the line. And lastly I want to talk a bit about GPS reception quality and of course I did some screenshots, let me just zoom out a bit. And I made the usual three tests, one outside one in the house in front of a window and one in the middle of the house without any window nearby. So the first one outside got a fixed 411 satellites and 6 meters of accuracy which is perfectly fine. We have a good um, signal strength as you, as you can see here and we also have some GLONASS satellites on here. Then um, if I move further within the house um, I've got a fixed 48 satellites and 12 meters of accuracy, still a very good um, signal strength and also still some GLONASS satellites. And then without any window it dropped to a fix for free satellites and 164 meters. That's certainly not enough anymore for any navigation. Um, but well, uh, in real life uh, for you this means that you won't have any issues while doing tracking or navigations with this phone and what you have just seen here is the M22 um, benchmark score of the previous version I did a screenshot of this one. Okay, that's about reception quality. So my next topic to talk about with you is uh, the camera quality of the Xiaomi Mi 4 and unfortunately this is something I have to complain about uh, a bit again. Complaining at a high level but still complaining. Um, well, in my opinion, and I guess most of you will share this with me, is that today's flagship phones should provide an outstanding camera performance, especially in the higher price ranges. As most phones um, that got introduced uh, uh, this year as flagships on the higher price ranges um, feature very good cameras. So the competitors have to keep up with them and the Xiaomi Mi 4 is one of them. Now this phone features a 30 megapixel rear camera and don't get me wrong, this camera creates really decent images but they are not flawless. Um, to make it short, um, the camera is not as good as most other flagships nowadays. Far away from a Vivo X shot or an Oppo Find 7. And um, you could compare it to the camera inside the OnePlus One, which I and many others are not that satisfied with. So let me go into details a bit. Um, the pictures look really nice, they have a great depth of field and great colors, and the camera also has pretty much no problem with hard light conditions, at least. Uh, bright hard like conditions meaning direct sunlight or something. Um, but um, it has certain issues with anti-aliasing, meaning you get uh, like the stairs effect on lines um, that doesn't look quite well and there also is a pretty high noise percentage in pictures um, which doesn't always look quite nice and it also is getting issues in dark environments pretty fast. Now this phone has a really really good LED flash. It's just a single LED flash but it's bright as hell. I made a picture of, of the house here uh, in the night and it managed to light up the complete wall um, which is insane for a single LED flash. But it has um, 
a very strange behavior. It's taking out the colors of images. So those look like black and white images with a hint of color. So that doesn't look quite beautiful again. And also um, pictures taken with the LED flash show a lot of noise inside the images. So um, that's not really anything you would want to take pictures with it. So it's very bright but still not very usable. And another thing I noticed is during video recordings. If you do a 4K video the quality is just fine. It's not as good as the 4K video quality of the OnePlus One but it comes pretty close. Um, but as soon as you switch down to 1080p resolution um, it should still look quite fine if you play it at native resolution, but it doesn't. It looks like made with a better webcam or something. Um, just not a good video quality, I don't know why. Probably this is related to the software, it's for sure related to the software. Um, else it wouldn't be that good with 4K videos. So I guess that will be fixed in the future. But something that's annoying here again is the microphone. Yes, again the microphone. Um, Every video, no matter if you do 4K video or 1080p video or 720p video, they always have some strange high frequency noise in the background, which is totally annoying and absolutely unacceptable. And what I have to say is that this isn't the only flaw. Um, the audio actually sounds like if you would film something underwater or, or, or just drop your head underwater and start talking. This is what the audio quality sounds like. This is really strange, really annoying and actually makes this phone totally unusual as a video camera which I really dislike. Um, the last part to talk about is the front camera and this one is an 8 megapixel camera unit promising an outstanding selfie performance. Promising, that's the only thing it does because it doesn't deliver. I have to say that the quality is pretty much the same as with the OnePlus One and everyone who read my review about the OnePlus One knows that this camera was the biggest shit ever. Uh, honestly, I have not seen much front cameras with such bad picture quality. It's not sharp, the colors don't look that nice. They are still acceptable but don't look that nice. And the noise production of this camera is just insane. As soon as it gets a little bit darker you will get tons of noise making it pretty, pretty much impossible to do proper selfies with this phone. So all in all the camera performance is still acceptable in the Xiaomi 4 but it definitely has flaws and all in all it is one of the worst flagship cameras we have in Chinese phones so far. So now we already reached the last part to talk about and that's uh, the battery of uh, the Xiaomi Mi 4. This one is a 3080 milliamps unit built inside the phone, non-replaceable just as with uh, the Xiaomi Mi 3. Now I have to say that the battery is really good. It lasts around two full days for me and I'm a power user so that's pretty good performance. And basically there is nothing to complain about, but if I directly compare it with the Xiaomi Mi 3, this one actually reached with same usage almost 3 days, not always, but very often. And um, this is a little disappointing because I expected the Xiaomi Mi 4 to be at least the same or maybe even a little bit more. Um, but all in all this is a little disappointing taking all the other flaws into account and considering the higher price of the phone. So don't get me wrong, this is a great battery life but it's not as good as the Xiaomi Mi 3, unfortunately. Um, luckily um, charging the battery doesn't take that long. Um, you have charged it again to 100% within 1.5 hours. I guess they are using the Qualcomm fast charging technology that is available with those new chipsets and um, this is why it is charging rather fast. 
Okay guys, and now it's up to me to build a conclusion out of all this. Well, my mo the most important cons about the Xiaomi 4 are probably uh, the issues with the microphones during video recordings and phone calls. This is something that isn't really acceptable to me. And something that's only important for me is um, that uh, the that the processor is not much more powerful uh, than the Mi 3. So you have a little more RAM for multitasking and a little more power. But all in all, the difference to a Xiaomi Mi 3 with Snapdragon 800 isn't that huge. And that's something important for me because if I buy uh, the Mi 4, I would pay up to 200 bucks more than with a Mi 3. And this is why I personally wouldn't buy the Mi 4 right now because of all the flaws and because of the higher price. I would buy a Xiaomi Mi 3 um, right now. Of course this will change with time, updates will come out improving all the stuff, um, maybe even battery life, we don't know. Um, but I can just um, talk about it as it is right now. So you have basically to decide um, what do you think about it? I just told you all the flaws, all the pros and cons and you have to decide um, if the phone is anything for you or not. It's an amazing phone, it's a good flagship device, it's a good successor, but it still has some flaws. So this is what I will finish this review now with and say thanks for watching the video. I hope it was helpful for you. And if you liked it, please give a thumbs up, maybe leave a comment and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, bye, check out the written review below and see you soon.